This is Law of Attraction Explored. I'm Tim Grimes. If you'd like a free guide that explains the hidden link between relaxation and the Law of Attraction, or if you want more information about my books or my coaching, you can visit RadicalCounselor.com. Enjoy the episode. So I thought that I would have us go back to Kuwait today, because it's always good to go back to Kuwait, in my opinion, as most of you know. My relationship with Emil Kuwait's teachings is quite different than my relationship with any other Law of Attraction teachings. Because as I've said many times, Kue is really explaining the fundamental psychology behind so many of these Law of Attraction principles and doing it in such a straightforward manner that it's almost like looking at a a medical textbook for how these things work. There's no metaphysical terms thrown about loosely, no unnecessary spiritual language, none of that stuff. And Self-Mastery Through Conscious Autosuggestion, which I'm going to read from today, it, it really is a textbook when you get into this stuff, if you study it. As I always say, it's not about Kuei's specific auto-suggestion method. That's a wonderful method. His technique is wonderful. But why Kuei is so valuable is because he is explaining how the overall psychology of the law of attraction works. Whether you're using his method, his technique, or any other teacher's technique, it's pretty much the same psychology that you are utilizing. So I'm going to read a few things today. Uh, Some of them I've already read, but you will hear them in a new way when you hear them today because every time you read Kuei, you learn something new if you are open to it. Kuei says, when you want to manifest something, he says, your state of mind must be, I desire to do or to have such and such a thing, and I am about to do or to have it. That is how we get something into our lives. We desire to have it or to do it, and we believe, we imagine, and therefore believe that we are going to do it or have it, and so we get it. One way or the other, we get it. Let me read this quote as part of its larger context in the book. In this section, Kuei writes, We human beings resemble more or less a flock of sheep. Against our will, we follow the example of others, imagining that we cannot do otherwise. I could cite thousands of other examples, only the enumeration would be tiresome. I cannot, however omit emphasizing this factor of the enormous power of imagination, otherwise called the unconscious, in its fight against the will. Drunkards would gladly stop drinking, but they cannot control themselves. Ask them. They will tell you, in all sincerity, that they would like to be abstemious, that drink is disgusting to them, but that they are irresistibly driven to drink in spite of their will and in spite of the evil consequences which they know are sure to result. In the same manner, criminals commit crimes in spite of themselves. When you ask them why they have acted that way, they reply, I could not help myself. I was pushed to it. It was beyond my power of resistance. And the drunkard as well as the criminal speaks the truth. They are forced to act as they do because they imagine that they cannot help themselves. I do not say that your will is not a power. On the contrary, it is a great force, but it almost always turns against you. Your state of mind must be, I desire to do or to have such and such a thing, and I am about to do or to have it. If you make no will efforts, you will secede. 
Now then, we who are so proud of our willpower, we who think that we act voluntarily, we are, in reality, only poor puppets directed by our imagination which holds the reins. We cease to be puppets only after we have learned to consciously direct our imagination. So, this is what we always talk about. And it's so straightforward that I fear that many of you will not grasp it the first time you hear it. The reason Kuwait is not more famous or popular today is because it's too simple for most people into the law of attraction to understand. They think it can't be this simple. Well, it is this simple on a psychological level. Whether his actual method of saying out a suggestion is really as simple to effectively implement, you could argue against that, certainly. Just like most LOA techniques that are supposed to be simple end up not being as simple as we hope they would be or as simple as many teachers claim they will be. But the psychology behind this stuff really is this simple on a practical level. You don't have to like, you know, draw yourself into a a frenzy of feeling and think I already have this thing. I already possess it. Like Neville or some other law of attraction teachers recommend. You don't have to do that in order to get the thing. If you simply think I desire to have this thing and I'm going to get it, you're going to get it. If you have the certainty that it is coming to you, that you are going to get it, you're going to get it if it's within the laws of nature. It really is that simple. And the problem is we use willpower to try to get things we want, but our imagination is working against that willpower the whole time. And as strong as our willpower might be, it can't compete with our imagination, which is why what we want to do is make it so that our willpower and our imagination are unified and on the same front going for the same thing. Because when our will and our imagination work together, they are almost an unstoppable force. If you can convince yourself that you are going to get something, that you are going to manifest something, that it is coming, and that's it. And I really just want to emphasize, because this is... Uh, Such a profound line that I desire to have this thing and I'm going to have it. I desire to do this thing and I'm going to do it. It is that simple. And we like to complicate it, but there's really no need.